Hey guys, it's me, Sitija Monige, and today I'm joined by my roommate, Ryan Raman. And Ryan is actually going to be pursuing his MD PhD at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. And today, basically you can already know from the from the title, we're gonna be talking about how to choose a graduate school program. Let's dive right into it. I invited Ryan because he just decided where he's going to pursue his MD PhD at again, just as I said, University of Pennsylvania just this week. So it's fresh on his mind. Um, he just made the decision and I just wanted to see what his insights were on if he has any advice for people that are viewing this, that are going through the application process, trying to decide. Um, so yeah, what are your overall thoughts? Yeah, sure. Um, so thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, I always like talking about this kind of thing because it's, you know, been over a year long process for me, just applying and interviewing and all that stuff for MD PhD. But even for grad school, it's just an incredibly hard choice to make and it's going to impact, you know, your entire life moving forward. So I think for me, the main things that I think about when trying to make a big choice like this, especially in terms of the PhD program is, you know, what what are my goals, right? What do I want to accomplish in terms of output? And then also, what do I want to learn? So do I want to be publishing papers all the time? Do I want to be learning how to ask the right questions? And in my specific field, do I have a specific interest in research or something like that? So those are the main things. And then the other, the other really important thing you want to think about is what your why is. So kind of what your motivation is for going into this PhD program. And then finally, bringing that all together, wrapping it in and saying, okay, what is the PhD program that will support you know, my accomplishments and allow me to become this uh, you know, doctorate of whatever I'm interested in, uh, this expert in whatever I'm interested in, but also you know, not make me forsake my motivation and you know, allow me to pursue what I'm interested in. So those are the main things that I think uh, form the core of your decision of a PhD program. Mm -hmm. And so you had to decide between a couple of really, really great schools, and you ended up deciding on UPenn. Um, what were some of the like really nice things, some of the pros to the University of Pennsylvania, the Perelman School of Medicine for you? Yeah, that's a perfect question. So for Penn in general, there are some really great strengths, right? So uh, in terms of you know my goals, right? I hope to one day you know kind of come up with some kind of therapy or cure for Alzheimer's disease. I mean that's my end goal. It's kind of lofty, but uh, you know, it's, it's kind of my dream and you know, I'm really passionate about it because of my, my family that's been affected by Alzheimer's disease. And so, you know, when I looked at Penn, I had to think to myself, is this a place where I can actually see myself learning the skills necessary to tackle such a huge problem? And there's just a great history of neurodegenerative research there. There's a massive biobank that can allow me to access all the resources like patient data and things like that that I would need study so in terms of a research side of things I knew that I would be covered so I knew that you know it would meet my goals like I said earlier now in terms of output I was a little bit concerned at first but then I found some good faculty I met faculty I emailed people and uh, on the interview trail I also had the chance to ask you know specific faculty questions about you know what their labs are like and what their output is so I also got that need met so both goals output and then uh, you know my motivation was all met at Penn. And then there were all of the really good side things, right? Like the location. Philadelphia is an amazing place to live. It's not as crazy or hectic as like a massive city like New York, but it's still got a crazy amount of diversity and a lot of great opportunities. And then the people there were just fantastic. And so these are all things that you have to think about. Once you meet the, the core needs, then you can start thinking about things like location, people, the, you know, the friends around you that might make up, you know, really your, your friends for the rest of your life because some of the people you meet in your graduate school will, will be your friends for life and you know may even be your your partner or significant other as well mm -hmm. and like one thing about like this graduate school decision is like at, uh, at a certain point all of these schools pretty much have the same things to offer right and like I think one important thing that maybe kind of gets overlooked is the actual people that are there at the grad school so if, if you've seen other videos on the channel like I am also going to graduate school um, at Cornell University and like one of the huge draws there was their their amazing people there at Cornell. Um, the way that it's structured, it's like very student centered. And I found that like when I visited, I felt like super welcome. Um, everybody was really nice, and I just had a really good time there. And I think like I could see myself being happy, doing the work, and also you know being able to learn, do the research, and all of that. So I think like that is an important consideration for sure. Yeah, 
definitely. And that actually reminds me because the way you, you, you talked about being welcome, you want to make sure that you like feel supported, not just in the sense of like just the people and friends around you, but also the administration and the program itself. Like, do they offer you know counseling services and things like that for when things get hard? Um, not everybody struggles in the same way, but you want to make sure that they are really supportive of their students. They care about them because some programs, you know, they're very prestigious and they have you know a lot of money and resources, but then they kind of let their students kind of fight for their own and. Kind of figure everything out on their own, and that can be beneficial in some ways, but it can also be harmful whenever uh, people start falling through the cracks. Mm -hmm. So definitely an important thing to keep in mind. And I also felt like Penn just had just phenomenal faculty, and the people running the program, you know, were very personal whenever they actually talked to me. And you know, every time I sent the director, the head of the actual entire program, he always sent me a personal email back. And something about that is is pretty inspiring, yeah. pretty touching too. So like that's. That's something that is definitely important and something you should think about is you want to feel valued there too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And obviously like there are a lot of academic considerations as well. Like they're, they're not completely indistinguishable. There are some programs that are be better tailored to your needs, especially if you're pursuing a PhD, um, you got to make sure like, do they have the type of research that you wanted? And I think that was a consideration for you. Like specifically you want to like tackle neuroscience, neurodegeneracy, like maybe Alzheimer's type stuff eventually. And I think you wanted to make sure that there was like a lab uh, like to actually work at when you arrived there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you want to make sure that, you know, there are the right interests there as well because, you know, if you choose a place just because you love the location or because everything, all of the other boxes are checked, but then the actual purpose of you going to the PhD program isn't met, then you've made a huge mistake because once you join a lab or or you know you, you find a mentor they may not actually be the right fit for you and, and another thing is actually you want to make sure you have more than one mentor more than one faculty member i know that uh, phd programs aren't all the same so like for me i know that neuroscience phds you get the chance to rotate in labs but some P some phd programs mm -hmm. like maybe like statistics you have to come in already knowing which mentor you're going to be with or i'm not sure exactly which phd programs are like that but um, yeah, so you have to really make sure that that's met. Another thing is, you know, something that a lot of people don't talk about too much, but is obviously extremely important is also the finances, right? Like the cost of living where you're at and the stipend and whether that balances out, um, whether you do have funding or not, because some people, you know, are very lucky and or they are very hardworking and they get, you know, the NSF uh, uh, graduate fellowship or, or different things, but some others, you know, have to rely on the institution for funding. And some places are better than others, and that's that's definitely a fact. And um, you want to be able to live on that because uh, you're going to be there for a few years. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that was a, that was definitely a huge consideration, like for me as well. More specifically, like during the application process itself, um, you just want to make sure like that the that the students are well taken care of financially, uh, because the cost of living in some places is like pretty extreme, and sometimes the stipends can be like you know kind of iffy on that, um, at least financially. Um, so that is like one real consideration to take into account when you're doing that final check of uh, what are the boxes that are checked uh, like in terms of I guess we were, we were talking about this earlier like ranking um, the different categories so like what are the different categories that you might rank for grad schools yeah so basically I actually created this whole excel you know spreadsheet and I had different categories listed and then I had let's say four programs that I was interested in right on um, on the left side and you know I just basically ranked them one through four you know one being the best four being the worst and in each of these categories that way I was forced to actually choose one over the other in each category and some of them were you know location some of them were proximity to my partner who's you know also going to be in med school and we're going to be doing long distance already but I wanted to make sure we were at least as close as possible and it was easier to reach her same time zone um, you know Another factor was obviously research. That was one thing. For me, there was also the med school to consider, so that was another category. Um, I think those are main things. People, like just in general culture, vibiness of the place, that's something that you'll hear actually a lot. Uh, it's just what is, what is the vibe of one place or another. And so that was an important category. And so I think those were honestly the main ones that I could think of. I also put fun as a category, which is, you know, kind of up to you, you know, what and your interests. So like some places, you know, maybe have a lot more nature than other places, or, you know, some places will have 
a lot of tennis courts or whatever you're interested in or an acapella group. Um, so the, those kinds of things can are small, but, but can uh, play play a role in your overall happiness in grad school. Mm -hmm. So I think those are the pretty much like main categories of what we wanted to cover and how to make your grad school decision. Um, I guess overall and like some final concluding remarks, um, I guess we can say, you know, don't, don't put too much emphasis on this type of thing because there's no way to get it exactly right. You know, there's no like con full convergence to a solution here. It, it's a soft, it's a softer thing. So you just have to kind of weigh how important are, uh, like how do you feel welcomed uh, by the department? Does the department do the research that you would like? What is the environment like? What's the city like? I think these are some of the main considerations for making your grad school decision overall. Yeah, and ultimately at the end of the day, like you can't really make a wrong choice when you have options. And if you're lucky enough to get options, you know, you really can't go wrong with any of these programs. And so just be confident in it and enjoy it. And, uh, you know, really, really uh, revel in the moment and, and take satisfaction and be grateful for, you know, having the opportunity to have these choices. But, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's about it. Well, congratulations guys on like making it to this step. You've definitely worked hard to, you know, finally get to this step of actually deciding where you're going to grad school. Um, Ryan, dude, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I hope you really enjoyed the video. If you drop a comment, I definitely will respond to you. Ryan and I can, can answer those comments as needed. Um, my name is Sithijit, this is Ryan Raman, and uh, we'll see you next time.